I should my sit he Chrysoi Chris Doi. How's everyone doing? How is everybody doing? I hope you're doing well to be honest. But uh, today we are talking about Matt Hague's The Comfort Book or The Comfort Book by Matt Hague. Whatever whatever you prefer. This is uh, it's a nice little book to be honest. It was released this year. I think it's a very recent release and uh, I was just flicking through I think it was Goodreads and I was like, oh that looks really good. So I picked it up. Um but yeah, you know this uh this video is gonna be the same as usual. You know, I'm gonna give the book a very brief roundup, brief summary, and I'll just talk about it in more depth. So if you're sat there thinking, Oh, should I get this book? You don't have to watch the entire video. It would be nice, but you know, you don't have to watch it. So, without uh without further ado, I suppose we should get into uh get into the comfort book. Let's uh let's get a little bit of comfort and uh well, let's go, I suppose. So, if you're looking at the comfort book, if you're holding this bad boy in your hands, you're looking at 253 pages of uh, wholesome goodness, I suppose. Now, I uh, I personally read this book in one sitting because, well, my, my internet went down. And when I haven't got anything at all to distract me, then I will literally just devour any sort of literature that is probably my toxic reading trait but either way so if you're sat there thinking oh do i want the comfort book well how do i put it there are no illustrations in this book you know i thought it'd be like uh the boy the mole the fox and the horse i thought it'd be that kind of thing with uh, illustrations alongside the words there are no illustrations this is literally just words um and the words could be anything from stories to uh I don't want to say poems, but they're sort of like statements kind of thing. It's meant to be like uh, things like you are worth it, that kind of thing. And then the odd recipe. And uh, that's about it. The book is actually quite nice. It's quite wholesome, like I said. It's very motivational. Uh, is it motivational? I don't know. But there is obviously a downside. I am going to say the one downside to this book is that it is uh, it's wholesome it's like a hug but the thing with hugs is that if they go on for too long it's quite it's not it's like oh i don't want to be here anymore and that's the thing i found with the comfort book the book went on for quite a while the book actually because i read it in one sitting i thought by the by the end period i'm like okay I'm, uh, i should have read this in two sittings because it went on for a bit it went on for, on for a bit and that's really the only downside to this book there's not a whole lot else to say the book itself is wholesome it's nice is it a self-help book i'm not entirely sure i think it's a book that is meant to help you if you're feeling down like i said it is the comfort book it's meant to provide comfort it's a comfort book like i said it's uh the only issue is yeah it just goes on for a bit long you know, there are no illustrations. If you're looking for cute illustrations, there are none. And that's about it. The book itself is wholesome. It is lovely. You are probably going to like the book. If it's the sort of thing you're into. If it's not the sort of thing you're into, well, you're probably not going to like it, are you? And that's about it, guys and girls. If, uh, well, that's a quick rundown anyway. Um, so, yeah. Do I recommend the book? Yeah. I do recommend the book if it's what you're into. Like I said, it's a comfort book. It's uh, it's meant to be a hug. It's meant to be a pick-me-up if you're feeling down, if you're feeling teary. If maybe you're going into a depressive episode, maybe it might sort of lift your spirits a little bit more. If not, well, it's certainly wholesome. It's nice. And it's a nice little read. You know, it's one of those books where if you like Matt Hay, you probably like the book. If you like that sort of thing, you're probably going to like it anyway. So... Yeah, I recommend this book. If uh, if you're on the fence, I recommend it. So I suppose it's uh, it's time to actually talk about it in a little bit more depth, if that's possible. So without further ado, let's go. So I don't really know how to do this in more depth, if I'm being brutally honest. The book is wholesome, like I said, it was published some around sometime recently, very recently, I think. And uh, yeah, it's just a series of you know short stories, anecdotes. Um, Little excerts from uh, books that Matt Higgs enjoyed and whatnot. He's got a list of songs that he likes. There's a really nice Haim song in there. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Something like If I Could Change Your Mind. It is a banger, to be fair. It's quite sad, but it is a banger. But yeah, you know, it's like uh, some of these excerpts. The only thing that I could say 
aside from it being a little bit too long as some of the excerpts some of the some of the like paragraphs the uh, things are meant to be motivational that are meant to pick you up when you're down some of them don't quite hit the mark they come off as quite um strange and you sort of sat there you're reading this and you're like what is this meant to mean because uh, that's the thing really it just doesn't go anywhere but I suppose this book doesn't really have a story. Like I said, it is just a series of like, you know, it's like uh, flicking through like an Instagram, a motivational Instagram page. And there's like lovely things that you can read. Some some of them just don't hit the mark. Um, and that's about it, really. There's not really much to talk about, guys and girls. Um, but I will. I will actually tell you one of my favourite parts. I got a bookmark. I've got, uh, what is my bookmark? I'm saying what is it? I know what it is. It's a magic app because uh, it's one of my favorite Pokemon. But yeah, there's a there's a nice little uh, is it like a chapter? Is it a page? It's a page titled Cap, and it's uh, you have no control over who people think you are. So don't worry if they want to hate a fictional version of you that lives in their minds. Let them. Don't drain yourself trying to be understood by people who insist on not understanding you. Keep your cup full. Go to the kindness. And then, opposite cap, there's uh, aim to be you. If you aim to be something you are not, you will always fail. Aim to be you. Aim to look and act and think like you. Embrace that humanness, endorse it, cherish it, love it, and don't give a heck if people mock you for it. Obviously, you didn't say heck. Um, there's, there's a fair bit of swearing in this book, I didn't expect that. But I don't really want to swear in there in this book but it is that sort of thing if you get what i mean i'm going to read two more pages just because uh just to give you sort of an impression and there's another page called a bag of moments happy moments are precious we need to hold on to them save them write them down place them in a bag have that metaphorical bag with you for when it seems happy moments could never exist sometimes just to be reminded of happiness makes it more possible and then the opposite page is your most treasured possession the present is known, the future is unknown. The present is solid, the future is abstract. Ruining the present by worrying about the future is like burning your most treasured possession simply because you might one day lose other possessions that you don't own yet. So yeah, that that's basically what the book is. It's just short chap no, short paragraphs that are meant to be like uplifting, they're meant to be wise, they're meant to be, I suppose, wholesome. I think Matt Haig does actually talk about his depression in this one, about anxiety. And it's it's nice, you know, it is nice, but I don't know. I suppose what it comes down to is that depression and anxiety and just mental health in general can be quite individualistic. Your depression might be different to Matt Haig's or my own, you know. And this is the thing, when you're reading through the comfort book, what you might find is that a lot of it might not help. A lot of it might just be like, you know preaching to the quiet what is that the word i don't know if that's the phrase but a lot of it might not actually comfort you and some of it might come across as quite pseudo deep um one thing that keeps coming to mind is peanut butter on toast and now if you're like me you know i grew up without being able to just put peanut butter on the shopping list um it's only really when i entered my powerlifting phase that i actually started like eating um uh, yeah, eating, I don't know, it sounds weird, you don't eat peanut butter by yourself. But I started using peanut butter, I started putting peanut butter on there, like, rice cakes. Um, rice cakes was my thing. And it's that sort of thing, you know, it's like, oh, a lot of it isn't going to hit the mark. Maybe it's a socio-economic thing, with Matt Haig being quite clearly very upper middle class. Um, but I'm not really sure, because uh, one thing that I've always recommended, it helps with depression. It's um, back in my photography phase, back in college. I'd always say, and I'd give advice to people, you know, people would be like, oh, I'm miserable, has anyone got any, you know, what makes you feel happy? And I'd, I'd always say, well, get a disposable camera and just go around your streets, the neighborhoods, the city, the town, or well, your city, your town. And just take pictures of things that you quite like, things that you appreciate, maybe things you find interesting, maybe, because for me personally, I think I live in quite, maybe like a Victorian town, I don't want to say Victorian town, because I don't think it's there, but, um, no, it was, well, no, but 
where a lot of the buildings are quite nice, but they're like three stories tall and you don't really look at the upper buildings, so you look at and you'll see where plaques used to be, you'll see like ornate carvings, and maybe take a picture of that, you know? But, um, a funny story, story is funny, but the one place uh, local to me where you can get film developed, I, uh, I took some film down, like your bog standard black and white film, I handed it over, and they're like, yeah, we'll get, we'll get it developed, come back next week. So I go back next week, and, um, no, we haven't got your film, sorry, pal. Go back the week after, no. So this takes, like, a month. I think it is a month, or maybe two, of me just coming back for, just being like, where, where is the film, guys? Uh, what they did, they lost it. Somebody lost it, either them or the developers. And then when they found it, they just handed it back to me. It wasn't developed. With uh, the excuse that they can't develop it. They don't know how to develop it. And it's just your box down the black and white film. So I've not gone back. Because you, you've got to be a special. Your brain has to be quite smooth to be unable to develop your box down the black and white film. But I digress. I digress. I find that creativity helps with depression music namely whether or not singing maybe doing a happy little jig personally i like guitar i like playing the acoustic and uh the acoustic has always helped me um since i had it to be honest back well, what is the year now about when i was like 17 15 14 ever since that age um i've just played guitar and it's helped me through a lot of tough times you know right now i've got the ukulele you know, I'm not very good at it, I'm learning it, but ukulele helps. You know, Matt Haig touches on music and learning music, but he talks about learning piano. And I think learning piano is quite like, you know, oof, they're quite expensive. They're quite expensive. You can get like a little electrical keyboard, but I think they're quite expensive as well. Ukuleles you can get for £25 off uh, Amazon, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I think when it comes down to depression, what always helps me is creativity you know whether or not it's photography music just singing by myself it's uh it always helps but uh yeah i think it's vaguely implied in the comfort book but i keep i keep digressing i keep digressing because i just mental health is uh, a very dear subject to me so yeah i'm gonna round up this uh, i'm gonna round up now this little talk about the comfort book so uh i suppose let's go so in conclusion, so we got the comfort book written by Matt Higg. Should you get this book? And I'm going to say, yeah, as long as you know what you're getting yourself into, then definitely go for it. If this is what you want and you're ready to pull the trigger, go for it, man. It's, a, it's an alright book. It's a heartwarming, wholesome, cute little book. Well, it's not cute. It's 253 pages. Um, but like I said, these pages are filled with uh, motivational quotes, recipes, stories lists of songs that Matt A quite likes when he's feeling down and uh, like I said you know there's no illustrations it is just text uh, but it is a nice book I think it is a good book I think it's nice it's heartwarming it's wholesome and like I said well like it says at the front at the start of the book Matt A says you know you bought this book he doesn't really care what you do with it you can rip out pages you don't like you can lend it to a friend whether you leave it next to your bed maybe you leave it in the bathroom maybe you just sort of leave it in the shed and you go when you're feeling down to read in a shed you know it doesn't matter as long as it acts as a vessel to get you from one side of the stream to the other you know gets you from being sad to maybe being a little bit happier you know and that it does it well you know the comfort book i don't know if it's a self-help book it's just a, it's a pick-me-up and it's a nice little pick-me-up um but yeah that's all i'm gonna say the book is lovely the book is lovely itself so i recommend it yeah you know maybe if you're still on the fence and i haven't uh, explained the book well enough check out some other reviews but i recommend the book so um i suppose that's it isn't it? so without further ado take care i hope you have a really nice week I hope you have a really nice day hopefully hopefully i've managed to cheer you up and you know if you're feeling down hopefully this video has cheered you up if not well i'm, I'm quite sorry but yeah have a lovely day, have a lovely week, and I hope you take care. I hope you uh, thoroughly enjoy this video. So, without further ado, goodbye.